Okay, hello um, to the uh, March um, Ask a Kanban training session. This is uh, often a joint session that we're doing with uh, the Pro Kanban community group uh, in Meetup and also the Lineage of London Meetup group. So today we have like, well, do not privilege. I think it's the second time we have you, John, with, with us. Um, it's about a year ago that we had you last time. And as usual, there are really excellent, excellent um, sessions with with John, lots of lots of wisdom. So as usual, we will be taking questions um, and then do our our best to to res to respond to them. Okay. While we are waiting for questions to appear on chat, um, John and I will, will have a, a quick a quick chat about a couple of things. And and just for this closer, John and I are you know we've known each other for it's quite a few years. I, I cannot remember how many years. I remember meeting you for the first time in person in a corner cafe somewhere in London when when I used to still go to cafes. Yeah, on like... 2016, I think, Jose, thereabouts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's about three three decades ago. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but. Um, at, at the time we were we were thinking that we were talking a lot about like you know kanban and flow and work and all the stuff and i i, I will imagine that um over the years that it's like kind of like recovering things that happen um and people ask and things like that especially in coaching and training um one that typically pops up in our groups is things about tools so i thought that maybe we start with john um talking about tools. Any thoughts about it? You know, good yeah, tools, bad tools, use or abuse of tools? Thank you, Jose. First thing I just want to say is uh, I was teaching face-to-face -face last week and the feeling of the marker against the whiteboard, it was just beautiful. Uh, what a sound. <laughs> What's that? And post-its yeah. and, and mag magnets moving on a board, the, the click, it was like... I don't know something clicked in my brain when it happened. It's uh, kind of a hard feeling to match, really. Yeah, um, that said, in the last couple of years, we've been distributed and so on. We've had to work online, and a lot of us are working in teams of teams and teams of teams of teams and so on. And so, even with physical boards, it can be difficult to get the boards to be up to date, really. And um, that's one of the attractions that I see in electronic tools. Um, the idea of uh, a team having its own board and then something moves on that board and then there's some kind of coordination board, something moves on that board as well. And then there's some strategy work or whatever, not, not even work, but there's some ideas coming in and, and we can see that that particular idea is 12% complete because all the percentage completion is rolling up and all that kind of wonderful stuff. But we have to be careful uh, with tools. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I used to make mistakes as well, even when I was doing face-to-face -face board, you know, physical boards. Uh, I remember uh, even as recently as a few years ago, Jose, you think I would have known better. Uh, I was doing these perfect boards. You know, you see these perfect boards and things, you know, the, the lines are all perfect and everything's just beautiful. And I was, I was chatting to Jim Benson yesterday. We kind of agreed that the best board is a really messy board, you know, because it's real, yeah. you know, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, even mm -hmm. if I come up with a really fancy design and I did, <laughs> I came in on a Sunday one, one weekend and I made up a beautiful board as magnets and it was all beautiful and the team hated it. <laughs> it's like, they didn't use it. It was like, what's the point? So mm -hmm. we can have the best uh, ideas in the world, but if the teams don't love what we do and that, also applies to electronic boards and so when i'm looking at electronic tools not only am i looking at how can i get things to roll up but also how can i get a situation where the people in teams have control over their boards you know they can have their columns their swim lanes if they use swim lanes colors legends whatever they want to do and that's the really key thing for me if i see a tool that's really more about the Kanban gods deciding what board you get, you know, or the scrum gods or whoever they are. <laughs> that's problematic. And um, I, and there's some tools that are more prone to that, to that than others. And so when I looked at some tools a couple of years ago, I was really looking for how can we get that mix of flexibility for teams, 
But at the same time, we know what's going on because even if teams have their own boards, we still know what's going on. That's the uh, the puzzle that I that was uh, troubling me a couple of years ago, and thankfully I found a couple of tools that might help with that. Uh, so it's, it's a really interesting, a couple of interesting points, and then I'm really curious about which which tools were those. But yeah. one thing about the tools, um, it, it is it is true that once you when we if we we used to say that the best tool is this world is a world yeah and with the distributed world that's that's actually probably not the case anymore if we if we continue to be distributed but it's, it's true the, the the better design the tool is or the better design the, the the board becomes the more difficult people the more difficult is to change it isn't it people people yeah. start thinking that it's, it's that there is a penalty in changing so sometimes using solutions which are too well crafted might deter yeah. our ability to just like hey just wipe it out this is not good yeah and this is what really worries me about uh going for consistent boards as some teams of teams that i work <laughs> with and <laughs> and it doesn't matter what i say like i say you can have whatever board you want no 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 we end up we want everyone to have the same board and actually when you look at each team they're not in love with their board because it's not their board it's somebody yeah. else that's decided it wasn't the Kanban gods, but it was the gods within their team of teams decided that mm. that's the board they should have. And that's really problematic. And, and it's it's one of the key practices of Kanban, review and improve your workflow. And it's the one that a lot of people forget, isn't it? They kind of, they create the board, you know, we're, we're up and running now, great, fantastic. Uh, but uh, there's some columns we're now using, or there's some maybe extra columns you should have, and nobody bothers to make the changes. And it's, it's something I see a lot. That would be problematic, but problematic when whatever the board looks like, it has been imposed on the team. Basically, we have removed the team's agency to make those decisions, isn't it? Hmm. Exactly. And it's, so there's a couple of things at play here. There's do the teams even have the power? Do they have the autonomy to actually change their own boards locally? And does the tool impede uh, roll up of uh, how we are, how we know how we're doing progress wise, because teams are autonomous with their boards? So having that striking that balance where you can have your own design and still the people above can see what's going on, they can see what maybe they might have capacity to do in the next quarter based on what's going through, and so mm -hmm. trying to strike that balance is crucial. But also what I've noticed is, is the the human factor of just not changing the board. It's, I don't know what it is. It's like, it doesn't matter how much we remind people, you can have whatever board you want. Once, uh, even when you do a physical board with uh, painter's tape, people don't want to move the painter's tape. Or are you, you make columns on an electronic board, they, they don't want to add something. It's kind of really, it's some kind of, I don't know, I haven't figured out what it is, but it, there's a human factor there that we also need to bear in mind. At least that's my two cents. Yeah, it's good. Um, going to electronic tools. Um, I guess that sometimes what 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 will happen with electronic tools is that whatever the decision that the designers of the tool have decided to you know whether they they support this or that features, then the um then our boards will have to comply to those things. So it, we we lose the flexibility to. To really create our boards, yeah. Exactly. Um, for example, I mean, a tool that doesn't have a way of displaying policies, either we don't display policies explicitly, or we have to start hacking them, hacking the policies around. Are there any particular pet peeves that you have with with? Uh, uh, we're gonna go into tools. Which ones John likes? Which one he doesn't like? Any particular pet pet peeves of things that are usually missing, or things that people should be looking at when they're making choices about how, how, what tools to pick up? Yeah, for for me. If, if Kanban means visual signal, how can we maximize the signals from the board? So how can we get, can we use color? Can we use different types of work in, in Kanban guide? Work item type is an optional thing you could use. It's very mm -hmm. useful, particularly in non-software. Uh, different types of work uh, is interesting to people, different customers. Uh, I'm a bit worried about tags because I've been kind of, uh, 
I, I don't know. I've been I've I've kind of suffered from people using tags uh, mm -hmm. to a fault, so I tried to lock that down a little bit. But some tags can be useful, like is the item cancelled or something like that. You know, so we have an idea what's going on with it, with a particular item. Um, can we can we have subtasks on the face of the card? Can can we have different owners for different subtasks? Can we have a card? That doesn't just have one person doing the work. Can we? Okay. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Yeah, it's. Um, I don't mind. I, I wish all the vendors would would allow us to have multiple owners, but some of the oh, multiple participants. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I don't mind. I mean, if there's one person who's more most worried about the card, like say John, John Jorgensen, mm -hmm. he's particularly worried about one particular card, but actually maybe Jose, you're contributing to it as well, and maybe yeah, Robert yeah. as well. As long mm -hmm. as we can find that card, because what bothers me sometimes is when people they copy a card because oh I can't see uh, people can't see my work so they copy the card and you kind of lost the plot then you know what I mean mm -hmm. so yeah it's it's about managing the the work rather than the workers which is a big thing that people uh, forget about okay any I mean uh, shall we put John on the spot and and tell us um, thumbs up thumbs down which ones here. What, 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 when you're looking at all these tools in terms of like being able to use them, any can I put you on the spot and say, okay, yeah, what are they? Please go, please don't go near this. Yeah, uh, are there any? Are there any like this? I, I can tell you what my criteria were a couple of years ago when I was looking the last time, and then I guess my criteria have extended a little bit since then because I've learned some stuff. So the first thing for me is, can I have Kanban boards on multiple levels? Mm -hmm. uh, that was a really crucial thing for me because, um. Having a single level board leads to problems where people mix items of different levels of granular. That might be fine if that's you. If you decide that's what you want in workflow, that's fine. Like Scrum boards are kind of have product backlog items and they've got tasks within them. But if we talk about Kanban boards, uh, mixing different uh, different levels of granularity on the same workflow can be problematic unless you've got some really good way of signaling that they're they're different. So I like seeing work items, maybe uh, some kind of goals ab above the work items. Maybe there's some kind of strategy above that. And in project-driven organizations, maybe you'd have work items feeding up into projects, maybe feeding up into key results, maybe feeding up into objectives, things like that. Uh, usually two or three levels. The simplest board of all is just one level, but in if you're in a really big organization, there's lots of stuff going on, lots of people, uh, people kind of get lost a little bit when you just show them like hundreds of work items on a board. So is there some way we can kind of aggregate that up? So that's one of the, that was, that was one of the first things. So, um, so Trello, for example, I like, kind of knocked Trello on the head for me because I, 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 maybe it's improved since then because I believe I've seen the bought it since, since I was looking at it thoroughly. But back then when I was looking, I could see one, a single level board. I could see you could hack by, you could have multiple boards, but they were all basically the same level. And uh, it, it didn't really give me the, the kind of aggregation that I was looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also, Trello was lacking in terms of uh, analytics as well. Uh, now, you have to be careful with analytics that we don't come across as being like big brother with, you know, what was your throughput on your cycle times and your aging and all that. You need to be focused on the human factors and what's really troubling people. But if I'm trying to figure out what's going on, if I'm trying to figure out if the flow is stable, uh, I probably need some analytics. And uh, so that was Trello knocked in the head for me straight away, uh, unfortunately. Um, I also ruled out Jira um, because the analytics uh, available in Jira uh, were not really what I was looking for. I saw some misinterpretations of not uh, just Scrum, uh, but also Kanban. Uh, I see it being misunderstood completely by Atlassian, as far as I can see. And so the, uh, the telemetry that's provided doesn't really help. Uh, Jira structure helps a little bit because you can now have multiple levels in Jira and so on, but it, it that okay that only solves part of my problem. I still need to see analytics at the different levels as well, so that knocked Jira on the head for me, uh, as well as just having a bad experience uh, with, with it. So I, I think I'm biased now at this stage. I'm, I'm admitting my bias, uh, just yeah. trauma yeah. with Jira, um, hmm. and then I looked at Teams. And Teams looks nice. You got you can make whatever board you want. And a lot of people don't realize this, but with DevOps as yours, there is your DevOps. I always get confused which one, which word goes first. But you can actually have Teams boards. If you do a little bit of work on DevOps as you're on the back end, you could have multi-level Teams uh, um, Kanban boards. 
um, and you can have the analytics in the background, but it was a lot of it was a lot of work and uh, it was too clunky. Uh, maybe it's improved in the last three years since I uh, two years since I since I played with it in, in detail, but teams didn't work for me. And I also noticed that that um, people, uh, it, uh, lots of organizations didn't uh, didn't give the rights to people to uh, design their own boards on teams as well, which was another factor as well. So have I multiple levels? Can I get some telemetry and what's going on? And will have teams have autonomy? While teams itself uh, doesn't constrain people, but the way people seem to implement it in their organizations, they seem to lock it down. So it's difficult. People have to submit requests to get board designs, and that makes it a bit over. So that, that knocked teams on the head. Um, so yeah. we're, kind of running, we're kind of running out of options, now, aren't we? <laughs> and then I, I then I looked at uh, LeanKit. I thought LeanKit was excellent. Um, <laughs> what troubled me about LeanKit is they were uh, they were bought by PlanView, so I had to buy two licenses. I'm not sure if that's changed. So if I wanted LeanKit, I needed PlanView, and then I'd get the the LeanKit add-on. And but uh, but what I was disappointed about was that. Uh, the first time I looked at LeanKit was 2016, and I thought I hadn't advanced that much since 2016. Okay. Years ago, so in a few years, I thought, oh, they were way, way ahead of the game, and they kind of they let people catch up, I thought. Uh, that was my okay. feeling. Uh, I also looked at Swift Kanban. Swift Kanban has uh, two-way sync with Jira, so uh, what you can do is, if you have Jira because your company has decided you should use that tool or whatever tool you use, uh, but you want a proper Kanban tool, uh, you could have, if the item moves in Jira, it moves on Swift Kanban and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And they've got analytics, they've got uh, anything that you could uh, uh, want actually it was very close to, to going for actually, uh, very, uh, very, very good tool. Um, and then I looked at Kanbanize and, um, and I almost didn't go for Kanbanize, uh, but I'm really glad that I did. And um, okay. so uh, it uh, Kanbanize uh, solved a problem for me because, okay, it had, it had the multiple levels, which is great. It had the analytics at all levels, which was fantastic. And they did, they did something very clever. So on your workflow, you know the way in a Kanban board, you've got your columns on a board and so on. And uh, what they did was they've got the color coding on the column type. So if you have a kind of a backlog or options or input queue type column, that would be gray. Uh, if you have, um, I told someone I'm going to start it, but I haven't started yet. Like we might call that selected. Um, yeah. uh, so we, uh, they made that blue. So you can see uh, the blue column. So it means like I told my boss I'm going to start it today. But it'd be lying saying it was in progress. It's not in progress. I just told her I'd started. I actually got interrupted, and I'm actually it's still, it's still, it's like uh, I committed to it, but I didn't really start it yet, kind of thing. And then they have amber for uh, any type of in progress column, and then green for done, and then uh, purple for archive. They've also got uh, colorblind settings as well, so that uh, the green appears as black or something like that. Again, it's very well done anyway. So what it means is that we can give autonomy to the, the Kanbanize uses workspaces. So within a workspace, you can create boards, you can have multi-level boards, you can have management board, team boards, all these different types of boards. You can have information security around the workspace. And within each workspace, as long as there's somebody who's reasonably skilled with Kanbanize, uh, we give them administrator rights. So they can basically create boards, change. Uh, so people in that area can change their columns, change whatever they want. And I'm not stressed about it because uh, even though there's a thousand people and one of my clients on this tool, I know exactly what's going on looking at the board because I know by the color coding, I can see uh, that if Raymond, for example, has a board and he's got three different in progress states, they're all amber. So I, I know what's going on. I know by looking at the board, what's going on. So I don't get stressed and it all rolls up. It's really, really clever what they've done. So um, yeah, I, I'm, a real, I'm a real fan of Kanban, I have to say. Do you have um you're talking about the levels, the colors and all stuff? Do you do you have a um we were talking about this? Do you have a quick quick demo for this? How, oh, how yeah. Works? yeah, no problem. So we'll let me good. see if I can find a share screen here. Let me just figure this yeah. out. Picture yeah. picture is picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, as well, I yeah? think so. I think so. <laughs> so. So hopefully you can see my browser Ooh. now. And um, you can't see much. All you can see is waves. Uh, lovely, lovely picture in the background there. But on this, 
I've got uh, three levels of the board for a, for a particular value stream. And uh, the very, very top, you've got strategy. And in this board here, there's, uh, you can see the color coding there. The gray means uh, some kind of a backlog column, blue means selected uh, typically, although you're going to see a difference in this particular case. Amber means in progress and green means done. There's also a kind of an archive one, kind of like your recycle bin. That number there means that if I drop a card into that column, it'll disappear after seven days. It's still in the system. I can still find it, uh, but it's, it just drops off the screen. So it means that the board stays uh, perform, perform as well. It, if you have hundreds of cards on your board, it, it, the board doesn't slow down basically is the idea. So uh, in this case, I've got three hypotheses and I can see exactly what's going on because they're gray. So it means the children, there's two goals under hypothesis one, uh, goal A and goal B. They're both in a backlog column because they're both gray. And it's similar for the other ones here. So there's strategy. And if I want to look at the goal, I can click on that and it opens up the second level. So if I hide the top level now, and so here I've got the different goals and within this particular hypothesis one goal A, I've got some work items. And if I want to look at work item one, I've got uh, that down here. So here I've got a three level board. And this is the board for a value stream, Jose. So there's uh, the first column is like the junkyard of ideas, not shortlisted or dumped yet. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to call it. <laughs> didn't want to call it a backlog. It's kind of a place. Where, yeah, okay. uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get rid of that thing. And then uh, I've got uh, basically options. Uh, so uh, they've, we, we've, we haven't said no yet to so these things. And then there's a, there's a team at the start of the value stream. There's a team at the middle of the value stream and there's a team at the end of the value stream. Okay. And there's- uh, You have an element of sequential teams working one after another. Okay. Yeah, there's kind of, remember uh, Klaus Leopold's book, Rethinking, as a Rethinking Agile, it's called, where he, he mm. has these different Kanban boards kind of almost sellotape together, zigzagging through the company. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. often we say, well, you know, we, we've got a two week sprint or whatever, but actually it takes three months by the time you get through the full value stream. So this is a very simple value stream of mm -hmm. just three teams sequential. I've also done uh, ones that are in parallel as well because we were not clear what the sequence is, but this one today I want to show you is just pure, mm -hmm. purely sequential. And okay. also there are some boards related to that. So uh, this would be uh, the start, this would be for the team at the start of the value stream. Uh, this board would be the, for the team at the middle of the value stream. And this one is for the team at the end of the value stream. So each team has their own board, right? And so what I love about Kanban is they have this thing where you can have related cards. So you can actually have cards on multiple boards. And when it moves on one board, it moves on the other board as well. So I, I hope it will work because I just put this together in the last hour. So hopefully it will all be fine. Uh, but sure, uh, well, let's, let's give it a go. So here in this case, um, so first of all, I just want to check, are there any questions on the workflow uh, before I before I move on, just in case I'm kind of going a bit too fast. You can Any speak questions? up. Yeah. Yes, you can unmute and talk. Um, sorry, just a question for me. What kind of work type, what, um, what kind of tasks, mm -hmm. I suppose I'm thinking about Jira with, you know, you have your yeah. tasks, you have your user story. What kind oh, of yeah, work yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, lives on which board? Thank you. Thank you. For, thank you for asking that. So, because uh, I forgot to mention that. So work item is something that in Kanban is something that delivers value. Um, in Scrum, the equivalent would be a product backlog item. Uh, but even then, I've seen teams where they have product backlog items are not actually delivering value. So here, ima imagine you're getting some value out of this. So if you did have subtasks, I could literally just kind of go in under the card and can put in, say, subtask, you know, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to keep it simple here. I uh, actually skipped a number by mistake, but uh, you these could be different subtasks and you could have different people uh, who'd be owning those tasks as well. You could have, you know, I'm on one and Jose's on another and so on and so forth. Um, so in this case, each of these cards would be like something like a product backlog item that you bring in from the product backlog into, in, uh, for, if it was a Scrum team, for example, or if it was the Kanban team, it's something that if you deliver, you get some value. Like um, if it's a piece of software, you get a feature. If it's... Um, something to do with marketing maybe there's some campaign has been delivered and it's live or we had some activation from the market uh, we we made some new qr code feature available so people can engage with our product something like that does that help yes thank you so when you talk about strategy level then would those be more 
epic. So, uh, yeah. So the so so here I'm kind of deliberately avoiding the epic word, oh, but okay. yeah, but I know what you mean though. So like you might have if you if you had work items here, you could have another level up. And one of my clients does have at this level. They're like epics or projects actually. They've got projects, so work items within projects. Uh, or you might have another, another client would be uh, product backlog items within epics. Uh, Scrum doesn't really talk about epics, but I, I know what you mean by that. And then you could say a strategy could be another level up again. So if there were projects at the mid level, it could be like portfolio at the top level, or it could be like objectives, key results, and work items, things like that. So it really depends on the context. Um, so I, I just made some assumptions here that. Uh, these people in this organization, they're reasonably goal oriented. They've kind of they're trying to move from project to product. They're really trying to focus on the customer, the end user, and they they know as well that even their strategic items, their ideas, there they know that uh, you know a lot of those ideas might be wrong. So they're really hypotheses, and we need to kind of figure out whether we should really even do bother doing these. But you could have mid level as epics and the higher up level as projects if you wanted to. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Cool. So I'm just going to simplify the workflow here where I'm just showing the, the work that we do every single day. Right. And um, on Kanban boards, you should have uh, you should have uh, work in progress limits. Probably could have done a better job with my work in progress limits here. Uh, so here, uh, this one's got uh, work in progress limit of two. This one's got four, excuse me, four, two and so on. There, there are some with no limits, which can be a bit of a problem, but I won't go into that today. You can also set uh, policies. So Jose talked about policies earlier. Uh, you can have, uh, you know, a car doesn't move from this column on to the next column unless it's satisfied these uh, exit criteria, if you like. You can do that. But I find that, uh, while it's a good idea, I find it a bit too clunky and people would be inclined to ignore it or tick it uh, just for the sake of ticking it. But uh, the power is there for you to do that. And also, by the way, you can even do something very clever on this. You can, um, this is really powerful. What you can do is you can say, uh, the service level expectation uh, on, on the in progress column, you could say, well, thing uh, card should only take five minutes, or because uh, you could say five weeks, for example. So we can actually do that quite easily, where a little red progress bar would appear. And just to illustrate, I'll, I'll do that now, actually, just to kind of, so if I come into the workflow here, I can just go down here down to Kanbanize. I could add a little clock thing here. I can say, I want to create a new service level expectation. And I'm just going to just do it for a bit of fun here, five minutes or less. And um, I'm just going to set it to five minutes uh, for anything in that column and uh, just save that, uh, apply it and save to the workflow. And so what it means is when cards go into that column later on, there'll be a timer on it. So what I do a lot of my teams is they don't look, they don't click on the analytics button, even though we pay money to, for them to, to be able to look at that. Um, so what I do is if they, if they won't look at the analytics, I bring the analytics to the board. So what I love about this is, if an item is taking longer than it would normally take, like say, for example, uh, different types of work might take different lengths of time based on the data. So I would uh, set that up on the system as well. But I think I'll just get started when I show you how this works. Um, so what I'm gonna do is this particular board is related to three other boards. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of work items here and uh, these two here at the, uh, the top of the list. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this is on the motherboard. I want, there's three teams. So I want to, in product backlog refinement or right sizing, I want to give that work to another team. So I'm going to give it to uh, this team here. And I'm just going to create a, uh, just going to copy the card, copy the details across. And I'm going to say, I just want that to go to the other board as well. Thank you very much. I want it also to go to the second team because it's a three-step process. So uh, they're not, they don't need to start it yet, but I just wanted to be ready for when, uh, you know, they had the item there to figure at least to have a heads up of what might be coming. And I'm going to add it as well to the, the, last, uh, the last board as well. And I'm going to do that just for the other one as well. Just so we've got two examples of cards going across the board. And so I could have added lots of details there. Uh, it's a very fancy editor there. Uh, I could have actually done that. And um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to um, uh, do add the second one. So if I add the second one here, and I'll do the same thing again, and I'll just uh, copy everything. And I'm uh, making some mistakes here, but that's OK. I'm just going to crack on what I'm doing at the moment. And then I'm just going to add it onto the second workflow as well. 
so that uh, basically all I'm doing is when we do that refinement, we're we're just making sure that you know we're, everybody's being given a heads up that this work is coming, and so they have visibility at least on their board. But, uh, but it's going to get interesting soon when we start actually interacting with the board. Okay, so so far all I've done is I've got these uh, 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 items here. And what I've done as well is when I added them to the other board, it means they're now visible on the other board. So this is this team at the start of the value stream. This is the team at the middle of the value stream. And this is the team at the end of the value stream. Now, before I start moving the cards through the workflow, I just want to check in, does anybody have any questions? I don't want to go ahead too fast, if that makes sense. No questions. Okay, so uh, so what I'm going to do here is um, so I'm on the the motherboard, if you like, right? So I can I can get rid of that depend dependency board. And I don't need to see the rated boards. This is the uh, remember the workflow you got start of the value stream, middle of the value stream, end of the value stream. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy here into the options, and um, I'm also going to move. Um, I'm going to move this one as well into the options as well. I'm not sure which ones I copied actually. I'm not sure which one I did actually. I'm kind of getting confused now. I'm getting confused, so I'll leave it there. So uh, if I if I look at this one now, uh, this is available on the options column, and I can see it was work item two, goal A work item two. So I want to move that in here as well. Okay. Uh, you have to be careful who you do. You kind of make sure that you've got the rectangle all ready to go. And so what's happening here now is it's it's copying the, the data across. And so what I do then is if I say, okay, that's moving from options into, uh, so let's say we had some kind of uh, coordination session, the representatives of each team got together and said, okay, that's gone into here now. And so then that would move on the uh, the team's board also, but the team said, actually, you know what? Uh, I'm actually working on that. So uh, they've moved it here. And then that, uh, that moves it as well on the motherboard, so to speak. Uh, then that team has actually moved it onto their done. So that has also, uh, should also, yeah, that's moved it on, on there as well. So basically what's happened is when I moved the card across the motherboard, it also moved across the, the child board, if you like, and it works the other way as well. It's two-way sync. And also, by the way, if I make a change, so if I add some stuff, I did make some mistakes earlier, but uh, uh, but if I add some subtasks, for example, it should add those also onto the uh, onto the main board. Uh, you can see they've been added here as well. If I block in one, it'll block in the other. If I change the color here, uh, let's let me just try this. I didn't test this earlier, but if I change the color of this to red. Uh, yeah, it's just changed it to red. If I, if I didn't test this, this is a brand new feature from Canvanize. I'm just, I haven't, I'm going to block it anyway. I shouldn't really do this. I'm going to say waiting on somebody else. I'm just curious, uh, does that work? It did work. Oh, it's nice, nice surprise. So blocked in one, blocked in the other. Really, really, really nice. If you add some descriptions to the item, I don't know, you can, uh, you can do all sorts of fancy stuff here. Like you can uh, draw a table and uh, kind of, you can add in some checklists and all sorts of stuff. And uh, and you can put a deadline, although I'm very slow to put deadlines unless they're real deadlines, but you, you can you can do that. And uh, yeah, so it's does, and now I say, okay, that's been unblocked now. So that we wanna release that. So I can unblock the card and hopefully it's been unblocked also here. And then when I click here, yeah, the table's there as well. So it's completely two-way sync. So one of the things I used to be worried about when I was looking at tools is, which board is the system of record, if you like, but you don't need to worry about that with Kanbanize because what happens is when you do an update on a card, if it's, if it's another card related to another board, it'll just copy what's there. And it even handles the people updating at the same time. It'll tell me Jose is in there. Do I really want to commit this or do I, you know, it kind of gives me a choice. So similar here, what I'm going to do is uh, this is already on the, the value stream here. So I can, if I move it on this board, uh, so it's on value stream one, and then I come back here, it's moved it here as well. Uh, let's kind of toggle it. So if I move it to in progress here, it uh, moves it here. If I move it uh, to done here, it uh, moves it to, to, to done here. Now, this is the interesting bit. If I now move it onto the second part, because remember there's three teams in this workflow. So this item moves on to 
the, the second board. I'm curious, will it appear? It does appear. And I say, okay, let's toggle this again, it moves into selected. And then it should move here as well. It did. I'm almost getting a heart attack here with the sub-second delay here, but uh, I'll go to, and, and you can see there, you can see the SLE appearing on the cards now as well, because this card is two minutes old and the SLE is five minutes. So when that goes over five minutes, I'll start going red. So when people start telling me, uh, uh, John, uh, that item that normally takes that long, I said, uh, uh, yeah, you must be smoking really good marijuana. I don't actually say that, but uh, I kind of I think that. <laughs> uh, because uh, only one in 20 items take longer than that for this type of work. So actually, there is something odd with this. You do need to check in what's going on because your data it does not support this. Um, so if I keep going then, so if I move this to done, for example, um, and then uh, move uh, shut on the on the final that's the middle board and the middle of the work stream. Of course, the the middle of the uh, the middle of the work stream uh, that team their work is still showing there because it's right that their done card should still be showing on their board. But from a, kind of an overall value stream point of view, uh, they really want to see that work moving on. So that's now moving on to the third part of the value stream. But then look at the third part of the value stream has appeared, and then move that across. And then flick back, and you can see it's 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 working perfectly. It's a, it's a really really good piece of software. And then move this across to done, and uh, hopefully I didn't attract it. Yeah, it went into done. Yeah, it's fine. And you can move to cancel the source. So that's a very simple uh, demonstration. Well, also as well, by the way, what I should have done, what I should have shown you as well, is you can also see what's going on at the goal level. So you can see here that if I could just compress this a bit so we see, so it's a bit more easy, I can even compress this here. So I don't even need to look at the level below. I know what's going on. What this is telling me is that there's a daddy strategy up there or mommy strategy or up there because uh, there's an up arrow saying up. And then there's one item that's in progress and there's one item that's done. How do I know? Because of the color. And if I open it, I can see, well, goal one is, uh, sorry, goal A, work item one is still in progress. Goal A work item two is actually done. So I said, what's going on with that? Uh, well, actually, yeah, it's it, um, that item is still stuck in there on, on team level one. So that's uh, so whether the team actually moves that to the final done is something that can be determined later on. Also, what you can do is at the strategy level as well, it's showing that that hypothesis um, has two goals. Uh, one of those goals is still in the backlog. The other one is actually in progress, and that's the item there. And so you got full traceability between work item, goal, strategy, value stream, connecting boards. I've had it with parallel boards as well, where uh, the we actually don't know uh, where it starts. It actually starts in one department and then it goes to another. Something went wrong and it goes somewhere else. And we don't like items moving backwards in a Kanban board, but we don't mind them moving up and down in a column sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a quick demonstration, Jose, of... Uh, I guess it's kind of like flight levels in, in a sense, what I did there, but there's more to flight levels than that. But what you can see here is the team has its own board, um, which is nice. They, and they have autonomy over what they call the columns. The people coordinating the work can see what's going on. They can see what the work is getting stuck. And the people dealing with the strategy, they can see what capacities, uh, well, how much work is going through the system. And uh, I tried to tell execs, you know, your capacity is your throughput. So however number of things you delivered last quarter is probably the number of things you might be able to do this quarter. It's not as simple as that, but that's kind of the, uh, the direction that I kind of give people. Open for questions though on this and from yourself as well, Jose, if you've got any questions as well. Um, one question that I saw on chat is, I mean, what I what I like about like generally with with any sort of like when you talk about business agility and taking it beyond the team, is and I think you just alluded to it is this connection of different business areas, business different parts of the business working together. Um, how how much does this work with like beyond the IT departments? Um, how well does this work typically? I think there was a question well, really. Yeah, mm -hmm. most of my work mm -hmm. is outside tech at the moment. Um, I've, I've been reintroduced to tech in the last six months. Um, mm -hmm. I was non-tech for the last few years, and it uh, works beautifully uh, in, in non-tech. And w there's similar problems. Essentially, a team can only be so lean and so agile on their own. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially uh, what we need to do is we need to kind of line up our ducks really in terms of dependencies and have even told those other people in the other department that uh, this work is coming. Um, mm -hmm. and so what, what I notice is when teams have their own boards, uh, they, they, they realize after a while that work is getting blocked up in a particular column or particular area of the board. And then that kind of begs the question, well, what do we need to do about that? And then conversations happen. Well, could we have a board? Mm -hmm. with different departments working together and that's i'm doing that with one of my clients at the moment where uh three different departments uh for the first time have their work uh moving so when each department does their own kanban boards and the work moves around we can even get it to for information security reasons we could even say only move the cards where that we want people to see you know there's some other secret ones that we don't want people to see and it works really, really nicely. It's uh, and people are realizing, oh, uh, I didn't know that we, I, I didn't know you were uh, going to do that. And yeah, yeah, we're that's coming in about twelve weeks. And these kind of conversations happen about uh, look ahead, if you like, really. Uh, doesn't try to say that a blocker is often a dependency that hasn't been communicated or acknowledged, and it's, it's just trying to kind of be sensible about uh, uh, planning our work uh, to, to oversimplify, I guess. Okay. Um, John Leon in particular was asking about like warehouse settings, um, intake process, inventories, queue to ship, stuff like that. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, some of my colleagues have been uh, using it in supply chain. Uh, I have a background in supply chain as well. And um, from the time that I was doing work that in a supply chain for Dell. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really appropriate for the, for the kind of work that's going on there as well. What you can do, by the way, it depends what you're looking for. Uh, really, if it's just about managing the work, you have to be careful with Kanban tools because one of the things that I've noticed, Kanban is, is uh, usually when it goes into a company, it's so popular and it's so intuitive that people start using it for other things. So I'm getting lots of requests where we have this other system or we have this spreadsheet or whatever, and we want to kind of put that stuff onto Kanban but they don't want to use it for Kanban. They want to use it because they just... Uh, they haven't found a solution so they want something that's a bit better supported and uh that's not really a nice path to go down because you they start asking for things that they're not comfortable with like can you track people's time and all this kind of rubbish you know that i'm not really comfortable with in fact in campanize you can log people's time but i've made sure wherever i work that that setting is turned off so that nobody will be uh, watching you know uh you know how little work i did today for example compared to other people okay um, there is a question from Robert, which um, probably might be good to keep the boards here. Um, you talk about flight levels, uh, flight levels, and how would you visualize flight level two via via the boards via the boards? What's the question? Can you rephrase the question? Or uh, do you have, if you have any experience using flight levels, the flight level framework, and if so, how do you visualize flight levels two via the board? Um, so Can there's, a, yeah, so, so first of all, I do, and uh, you do as well, of course, as I've been, uh, been a flight level coach and, and a guide, I believe, but uh, I'm just learning, I'm kind of uh, just starting to apply it over the last year or so, mm -hmm. and uh, there's different types of flight level two boards, so it's, you could have, a, in this particular case, I had one for a value stream, mm -hmm. uh, you, you could also have one for um for a project or for a portfolio, or it could be whatever you're interested in for your product or for different types of customer. Like what are, what are people collaborating around? What are they, what do they need to coordinate around, right? So in most cases, Robert, what I found is it's about value stream oriented, uh, but I've had situations where, for example, maybe a third party supplier uh, wanted to have their own board, but when they, well, we didn't uh, want them to see all the information in, in the companies, uh, in the client company. So the, the supplier had their own board and then we could still see the work moving. We could also roll it up as well. So at a flight level two, uh, one option, there's, uh, there's training on uh, designing flight level, uh, different flight levels and so on. One option would be just what I did there, where literally it was just work items going to the next level. What would be probably a more popular approach, though, would probably be looking at the, the work at the higher up level, the next level of granularity up. So you uh, so it depends on what you're looking for. Some people would be looking at, OK, uh, the, these particular hypo these goals that are going through the system, 
where are they? So what I could have done, for example, here is I could, instead of just having an in progress column, I could have had team one, or I could have had start of value stream, middle of value stream, end of value stream at that level as well. So you could see, without having to see all the work items, you could see what were the goals that were kind of uh, in, inside there. So it really depends on your context. It, uh, flight levels isn't so much about prescription about, you know, what would be a good design. It has some patterns and uh, some very good training as well in terms of uh, what you might consider. I hope that half answers your question at least, Robert. Come back to me with a follow-up question if I didn't answer it properly. Yeah, I mean, what, what you were trying to show here for me could be uh, could be categorized as some 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 degree of flight level too. Um, completely different question. And probably we 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 can we can um, stop screen sharing, but um, Esther, yeah. you had a question about uh, what's Esther? Yes. Um, when would you choose Kanban over Scrum? Do you do you have to choose Kanban over Scrum? Uh, what kind of project parameters would you look out to make to make that call? Yeah, that's a good question. I so there's a lot, a, lot, a lot more in it, yeah. Then, yes. Yeah, there's the, there's the heart and mind as well in this in this question as well because there might be some theoretical answers in terms of, you know, are, are the work items bigger than 30 days? Scrum requires that you deliver uh, an increment, done increment every 30 days. Can you deliver a done increment in 30 days? It's kind of a deal breaker for Scrum if you if you, if you you say you can't do that. And well, mm -hmm. uh, lots of people say, well, surely you can do something in a month, you know? I mean, I think if the, I think you can and you cannot as an opinion a lot of the time, but I often find in non-software that it really is a struggle to get work items down under 30 days. Uh, I see a lot of them like taking two months and so on. And so do you really want to mess up Scrum uh, with work, you know, taking that long? I mean, uh, like I said, can and cannot or uh, is an opinion. So, uh, you know, we really try to look into that. So it, for me, it comes down to you. I could come up with some logical kind of decision tree. And I actually have been guilty of doing that in the past. Uh, but really it comes down to the belief system, I think, in the team as well. So uh, if, for example, the organization wanted a team to use Scrum, uh, would they really, um, as soon as I turn my back, would they be, uh, would be, do, would they be doing everything anti-Scrum under the sun? Are, are they embracing the Scrum values and three pillars of uh, uh, transparency, inspection, adaptation. Uh, have they got the, the spirit of the thing? If it's just mechanical, I mean, uh, sometimes mechanical can be useful, uh, can it kind of get you into a rhythm, uh, but uh, are we really in the spirit of the thing? Are we, do we really want, uh, do we really respect this idea of a done increment, deficit done, absolutely central concept in Scrum? But Kanban also has a lot of discipline as well. I mean, uh, and to give Scrum credit, uh, you know, it, it, it limits work in progress. Uh, quite easily where you're saying, well, we're only going to do this amount of work in whatever time period, uh, one, two, three, four weeks or whatever. And we're just going to focus on these items. And, and you know, when the contract is, and if I shouldn't use the word contract, but the deal is, if you like that, you know, just leave us alone for a few weeks and we'll we'll get that done. We'll, we'll get that sorted and we'll be goal oriented as well. So if you find something that isn't quite right, we'll, uh, you know, if we, if we, if we discover that it's too much work. We'll have a chat about how we can simplify so we can still achieve the goal that you're looking for. So we're kind of thinking 80 20. So Scrum is very good in terms of focus and goal orientation. I'm a big fan of the product goal and Scrum, kind of something tangible that you can kind of latch onto on the way to your vision, if you like. I'm oversimplifying when I say that, but that's kind of in a nutshell. With, with Kanban, uh, I'm a big fan of Kanban as well. And uh, what I love about Kanban is it, it, it doesn't say you have to have the, any of these roles or hats or uh, yeah, what events you need to do and all that kind of stuff is quite flexible. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's you start from where you are now. That wouldn't be my philosophy because sometimes, you know, limiting work in progress is actually a big thing to do. That might be quite a leap for uh, for a team. And so you have to be really careful in my book, um, at least if people are thinking about using Kanban, are they just going to do visual management? Or are they going to be really serious about limiting work in progress, focusing on work item aging, uh, really trying to, uh, improve the flow of work through their system and not just through the teams, but also through teams of teams and through um, strategy and so on. And so for me, it's, it's, it's down to belief systems. What am I sensing? 
what am I feeling? Um, am I getting a lot of pushback? For example, uh, there's there's value in Scrum and the events that it has, like planning every few weeks, and then you have a review to kind of get together. So the complexity of our thinking goes up, and all the stakeholders get together. If you have them all one to one, you know it's like uh, it's kind of like divide and conquer, and maybe you don't. The level of complexity of the thinking doesn't isn't really where it needs to be. Um, and I love what Rich Hunthausen says. He says the sprint review is where you. But the customer goes to see what she asked for, what she doesn't want. Uh, kind of genius comment, I think. And so uh, that's uh, that's really good in retrospective. The rhythm of all that type of stuff in Scrum is really, really healthy. Um, if I'm sensing that uh, people are comfortable to do those things, as in Kanban, retrospective is a good idea as well. Uh, getting people together every so often to look at uh, how things are doing, that's also good, I think, good idea as well. But Kanban wouldn't be so hard on the whole idea of a done increment. You could look at, you know, okay, it is what it is, uh, the work is where it is kind of thing. And, uh, you know, we we can still uh, be empirical in a sense as well if we're using uh, evidence uh, to guide our decision making. Uh, but it's much more flexible. Uh, but the flexible the flexibility can also be a problem. Um, so Scrum can be good to kind of kind of get you up and going. Uh, Kanban is really flexible, allows you to, to do all sorts of things, but it's it's, uh, you know, it takes a lot of discipline. So I've seen both of them done badly and I've seen both of them done really, really well. And Kanban actually can be done with Scrum anyway, because as a Kanban guide for Scrum teams, you don't have to decide which one you can use the Kanban guide for Scrum teams. And uh, you can do both together. And I, I kind of use a metaphor of, it's like adding rocket fuel to your Scrum when you add Kanban to your Scrum. I've actually seen that. Uh, I've seen Kanban teams as well. Uh, who use something similar to sprint reviews uh, every few weeks and retrospectives, and they were getting more stuff done. Their cycle times were halved, um, at least. Uh, the stakeholders were really engaged. Uh, they had time to think, and uh, it was dealing with the reality that priorities were changing uh, during during a time period. Uh, people can, if people struggle to get that focus in the Scrum, if you're if you're if, if that's if you're not really going to be focused. Um, maybe Kanban can give you more flexibility, but it comes with the price of discipline. And are we self-disciplined enough to do it well? That's the, that's the kind of question. So very long answer, apologies for that. But it's it's not just about what's technically right, but it's also about what do we believe and what, what are we likely to really do? You know, at least that's my opinion. There's, there is one thing that I, um, something to add, it's like, a, a, a... Kanban and Scrum these days are very, very aligned. I mean, you have a Scrum, a Scrum with Kanban guide and things like that, but they're, they're both really, really aligned. There is one thing I quite like in the Scrum that I, I've seen many times not missing in, in some Kanban implement, implementations. And is that many times in Kanban implementations, um, I see teams that are very focused on the mechanics of Kanban, very mechanistic Kanban, running the process, running the flow, running this. But um, one, they can forget about the humanistic part. This yeah. is still teams and it's people. But the other thing is that it's not enough to just have work and flow that work very, very efficiently. It's also the effectiveness of that work. So one thing that I love from Scrum is the focus on goals, the focus on how do they, how are we delivering value? And that's something that I don't know if, is not that it's missing in Kanban, but maybe it's a little bit more implicit than it could be or should be. Any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, what, yeah. what I tend to do in practice, good point, uh, Jose. Um, <laughs> what, there's a lovely paper from Scrum.org. It's called Evidence-Based Management. And it's it, just because it's a Scrum.org paper doesn't mean it's for Scrum. It's for kind of any kind of agility, really. And uh, mm -hmm. even even the language differs from Scrum. So in Scrum, you, uh, we used to talk about the vision, remember, and people still talk about the vision, I guess. And there's the protocol now as well from the 2020 mm -hmm. guide. And you got sprinkles. Um, and in evidence-based management, they have tactical goals, which, which might be similar to a sprint goal. Um, and they, uh, they've got a protocol, which might be a tactical to intermediate or an intermediate goal. And they've got... Uh, you could have the vision as well, which could be your, uh, you know, your strategic goal, and you could even have your uh, almost impossible perfection vision beyond that as well, which isn't mentioned in evidence-based management. So you could uh, borrow from other uh, approaches, uh, and that's what I can. Mm -hmm. Skill practitioners tend to do that, don't they? They tend to kind of find other ways because you're right because Kanban isn't just about improving predictability and improving efficiency; it's also about effectiveness. And so the really skilled practitioners 
realize that it's uh, discovery is crucial. I love that expression from Ellen Gottesdine or discover to deliver. She wrote, I believe she wrote a book by that title. Yeah. Okay. So like, because a lot of the ideas that are in our options or backlog or whatever we call it, maybe they should never be built actually. Um, maybe we don't mm -hmm. have the evidence or maybe they're really valuable, but uh, do we have the capability to harvest that value? Um, are we thinking about the wrong customers? Are we looking at the wrong markets? Or maybe people maybe people do want that to be solved, but they're, they want it for free, you know, things like that. And so you could combine, for example, Kanban with Lean UX, for example, to, uh, to add discovery. So in practice, I would be mixing evidence-based management with uh, Lean UX uh, and Kanban to uh, sometimes with Scrum as well, to uh, to really get that uh, customer, uh, or it's not just about the customer as well, it could be sustainability goals, or maybe it could be um, some risk in our organization in terms of failure demand, or there's some technical debt or whatever. There's, there's lots of ways we can revalue, uh, and can, Kanban, to be fair, explains what value is as well. Uh, because if the product owner in Scrum is supposed to be maximizing value, well, it'd be kind of useful to know what it is. And Kanban does a kind of better job of explaining what, what value is. So it's a bit of a mix and match, really, for me, uh, Jose. Yeah. And is that the, the, the confluence of effectiveness, efficiency, and predictability that we're talking Kanban as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. so the, the key thing is we're... Uh, we're trying to improve all of those. It's, it's not, are we necessarily predictable? Are we necessarily efficient or effective? We're, we're trying to be more efficient, more effective, more predictable. Um, so instead of like, you know, throwing everything in, including the kitchen sink, uh, we're trying to focus on a few things, just get, them, just get them done, get some feedback as quick as we can, even getting our experiments done as quickly as possible as well. Uh, get some feedback and then decide whether it should go on to the next stage. Uh, is this an idea mm -hmm. that should be born or not? Yeah. Let's do let's do one more question. Um, it's uh, from Don. Don, you were talking about a question about like um, we talk about stuff like throughput, mechanics of flow, and forecasting, which is all great. Um, but can you share ideas or experience from Kanban or flight levels on focusing on the outcomes and the value part? So it's connected to, to what we just say. Um, I, yeah. I don't know if Don, you want to add something to the question. You're here, you're invisible. Yeah, I think you part answered it in the last response, actually. Um, and, yeah. and maybe the thing I'm perhaps thinking about more is visualizing progress towards measurable outcomes, like let's say market penetration or customer satisfaction, mm -hmm. if we've got some bigger goal. Yeah. How, how yeah. do you see our progress towards moving from 50% to 80%? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. what you could have, uh, for example, is the three-level board I had earlier. Um, maybe, Don, you could have, um, maybe there's some objectives, key results, or there's some other way of breaking down what your objectives are, your goals, uh, strategic uh, versus kind of intermediate goals. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to uh, increase... Uh, customer adoption or you want to improve customer task completion or something like that, you could have that as a goal you, at a higher level. And then you could have work items that are contributing to that. And, 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 and that way then it's just implicit in your workflow design. If your upper levels are goal oriented, then you're going to be more likely to have outcome or effect uh, consideration when you're seeing the work getting to done. What a lot of people do, uh, particularly with project orientation, is they they have work items flowing up into projects, flowing up into programs or whatever, and you know it all rolls up. They get to done, blah blah blah, and they just kind of land there. And sometimes what I find sad uh, is that people actually don't care. Sometimes they literally don't care. Uh, that we didn't get value. Uh, they got it done. They got it. It's, it's available for someone to take it away. Uh, but did they take it away? Well, we, we don't care. It's We've done our bit. It's like, okay. <laughs> so, so it's a bit of a journey, isn't it, uh, Don, to kind of, uh, when people start talking, I, I, what for me, the entry point for people talking about goals is if we can fix the plumbing problem, we can get more uh, through the system more quickly and so on, and give the feedback earlier, 
but then they realize that there's still too much demand for you know the capacity that we have in our organization that should drive 80 20 thinking and you can only get 80 well i shouldn't say only but one way to get to 80 20 is if you have some goal in mind and then you can figure out a simpler way to achieve that goal but if you just come up with a list of outputs we're just delivering stuff aren't we so i find that when people see that we've improved the flow but we still don't have enough capacity for what they want then we can really think about okay well maybe we need to be going moving to goal orientation here maybe we need a higher level boards that are goal oriented rather than kind of as someone mentioned earlier epic or project or program oriented if that makes sense and from a flight level point of view by the way you could literally have uh different flight level two boards for the different views so the project people look at the project view the 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 customer oriented folks look at how we're delivering our goals and are we making a difference and that's the, that's the beauty about flight levels as well. You can have uh, people can look at what the what's, what maybe what's relevant for them. Teams work where they work. Uh, we can coordinate work across value streams or products or projects or whatever it is. And the people making decisions about what we should start this quarter are aware of how much work is completing and how much capacity we really have to do more work. We're basically connecting the strategy with the reality. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, that's what we really love about electronic tools. It kind of calls BS on the amount of stuff that we're shoveling into teams. Um, and really, that's a key message. One of the first messages that I give to executives, your throughput is your capacity. Your capacity is your throughput. Um, I'm oversimplifying, but it's kind of a key message that, uh, you know, what are you doing? Shoveling all this work on top of people. We can use all the fancy methods of the world at team level. They're just coping, actually, if you keep shoveling work on top of them. Sorry, I just went on a just went on a soapbox there. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> Some people end in, in drowning with with work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, mindful about the time. I don't think there was some um, any further questions. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we're gonna use the strict time boxing. I just broke it. Um, thank you very much, John. Um, very very useful. Um, it it was good. I mean, the question about tools is one that keeps coming up all the time in sessions like this in coaching and training. So it was a good opportunity to do a little bit of a um, sort of like what's possible with tools. So hopefully that was useful. Um, thank you for um, your questions. Um, and as usual, this this video will be or this recording will be available in the um, in the Lineage London playlist. Um, we look forward to, to seeing you again. Uh, there will be more events coming up in the in both the Lineage and London Meta Group and in the Pro Kanban Community Meta Group. And hopefully, um, as a reminder, like we got the Lineage and London in person conference coming up at the end of May. So if you fancy a few days of um, interaction, people in 3D, I don't know what that looks like, and so on, um, it would be great to, to catch up. There will be, hopefully, we, we will be getting an excellent program, but most importantly, we will get the community back together seeing each other exchanging things so i'm um, looking forward to it thank you john it's uh, another privilege to have you thank you for putting together that kind of like quick demo of uh, it's to be honest i mean i don't know if to, if like the 10, 20 minutes that we had gave it no gave it gave it um um it was it, it, it really showed how powerful it can be not the tools but when you get this kind of like flow working together like the fact that you are updating you are coordinating you can see organizations working together um so it can be done with other tools kanban nice is one of them yeah but yeah uh, thank you very much um thank you everyone for your time um stay in touch and we'll see you in the next events thank you Thanks, bye, bye. bye.